I'm here with Peter Wallacein, who does wonderful work here in Southern California rescuing injured and stranded marine mammals. He founded the Whale Rescue Team in 1985 and has personally conducted over 4,000 marine animal and bird rescues. Hi, Peter. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Good. Um, how and when did your passion for marine mammals begin? Um, I think it started many years ago, even as a child. I've been a vegetarian for over 40 years, a vegan for 30 years, so it's across the board empathy for all animals and respect for all animals. But at, at a certain point in my life, uh, after traveling and soul searching for a long time, I found in Los Angeles County, where I ended up, a really flawed system of marine mammal care. Um, and it was needed. I, I needed to replace that flawed system with a better system so every animal got the best chance uh, uh, that it could for survival. Um, so I found my niche. You know, I found something that was a, a positive thing to do in the community that was really challenging physically and emotionally, but it kind of gave me what I needed, a hands-on uh, way to do things where actually my my energies and, and my actions had a direct effect on the lives of many animals. Sure. And um, what are the marine mammals that you rescue the most and what is the most common reason? Well we do rescue whales, dolphins, seals and sea lions but um, predominantly sea lions, California sea lions. Whether they have packing straps embedded in their neck, gill nets, some of them are shot, some of them are just sick. Can you share with us one of your biggest challenges and greatest successes over the years? Well, I think all my rescues are challenges, and I think the, the biggest challenge was to be accepted, um, and even with the opposition from the federal government. So I think one of my biggest accomplishments was to where I am today, how I just persevered and stayed professional. Um, perseverance pays off. Perseverance and, and, and being professional and mm -hmm. acting professional, definitely. Sure. And um, what exactly do you mean when you say, think globally, act locally? Well, before I was doing this, I was with a group called Sea Shepherd Society. Mm -hmm. We were launching campaigns around the world, North Pacific and um, the uh, North Atlantic, where they kill at the Faroe Islands, they kill about 4,000 pilot whales for sport. Then I was watching a news program when I was here in Los Angeles about whales dying in fishing nets. And I thought, wow, that must be in the Bering Sea or somewhere around the world. But it was my own backyard, right off of Palos Verdes and Malibu. Fishermen will lay gill nets in the water, and these animals during the migration, whales mostly, would swim right into them and drown. We got a call, and it was about a whale entangled in fishing net off of Palos Verdes. So we got in our little 16-foot boat. I had two crew members with me, and we got out there, and um, we were shocked what we saw. It was a mother gray whale and her baby, both wrapped up in the fishing net, both drowning, both struggling. You could feel the stress of both the animals. Mm -hmm. So we started cutting the mother out. Um, we did successfully cut her out, but we still had a lot of work to do. The baby whale had the fishing net around its tail, so every time it came up for, to try to get some air, the weight of the net would drag the baby back down. So it didn't have much longer, so we couldn't waste any time. All of a sudden, the mother dove underneath our boat. I told the crew members, hold on, I don't know what's going to happen. But what she did, to this day, gives me shivers. She came up under her baby and lifted her baby out of the water. We cut the net. She did it again and again and again within feet of our boat, never touching our boat. And we eventually were able to cut all the net off that whale. Mm -hmm. And for me, that, that was kind of a sign. Yeah. Peter, maybe this is what I should be doing. Mm -hmm. So that's where Think Globally, Act Locally came in for me and really hit home. Whatever it is, dealing with other animal issues, dealing with people, caregivers, whatever it is, work in your own backyard and we can make this planet a better place. Yeah. See what needs to be done at home. Yes. And um, I know I read that after much negotiation, you finally have the green light to build a second marine mammal care center. Tell us a little about where that's at, who's building it, and what it means for the animals that you rescue. I have a great green architect, award-winning architect, David Hertz from Santa Monica. So we're going to build a green building from the ground up and set new standards for environmental construction 
and daily operation. This is going to be hospital, open 24-7, staffed by the best staff that I can get, two veterinarians on staff at all times. Mm -hmm. So every animal that's in need, every injured, every sick, every orphaned animal is going to have a place to go. Mm -hmm. The days of leaving animals on the beach suffering in Alley County will soon be over. You've got a long way to go. We have a lot of money to raise. Um, we have to build this thing for about six to eight million dollars, probably eight hundred thousand dollars a year to operate it. But we're going to give it our best shot. Absolutely wonderful. Um, and what do you feel that parents? What are the little steps that parents and children can take to best supporting marine animals? Well, whether it's marine animals or other animals mm -hmm. or just generally the planet, you know, um, your food consumption is a, is a you know, something to look at and the animal suffering that our, our food industry causes too. Um, you're recycling what people throw out in the trash, what they throw in their lawns. So just be consumer conscious, be conscious of what you throw out, be conscious how you live and how you eat. The small actions combined really can create a big impact. Big impact. And my last question for you is who or what is your greatest inspiration? I think many people are. I don't have one individual, um, whether they're caregivers, whether they're teachers, whether they're the other animal rescuers, whether they're religious people. I, you know, people inspire me who are good people. Yourself, what you're doing, you're an inspiration, and and that's what that's what it's about. People that just live their lives in a healthy, non-selfish way to try to make this planet a better place for plant life and for animals and for other human beings, that's really important that, and that's my source of inspiration. Thank you so much, Peter. To find out more about Peter, his important work, and to make a, make a donation to the building of the Second Marine Mammal Care Center, please go to whalerescueteam.org. Thank you. Thank you.